I was actually just discussing the budget report before you came by. You must be very talented to have finished all your student council duties so quickly that you can check me down to make sure I don't forget my own. Are you accusing me of slacking off? It seems like you're confusing me with yourself. I don't think so. That would be a pretty difficult thing for me to do, comparing myself to you. You're right. The difference between us is like heaven and hell. And it's not hard to guess which one you might represent. The air between them ripples with the heat of their enmity. Well, not really. They can't disguise it anymore, even though Misha looks like she's beginning to understand the real nature of this conversation. Hey, Chan, don't slack up either! What are you talking about? Aren't you taking part in the festival, He Chan? You are, aren't you? Then I hope you're going to do a lot more than make sure it goes smoother than this person. I don't understand why Shizune is suddenly getting mad at me. Eh, this one. Hey, I'm the new guy, remember? It's not like I could have done much, even if I wanted. That's right, you shouldn't expect the transfer soon to jump right into it on his first week. Really taking my side feels oddly comforting, so I decide to back her up too. Yeah, you're being unreasonable with us both. Excuses, excuses. This class rep has had plenty of time to deal with the report. And we repeatedly offered you a position to help with the student council work, but you refused to commit yourself to making the festival a success. Yeah, but as I said back then, I'm not sure if... I don't have time for this right now. No matter what I do, it will mean being drawn to a conversation with Shizune. That's what she wants. Whatever, forget it. I turn my back at them. I get back to my seat and show my ears from the finale of the argument between Lily and Shizune. Eventually, Lily leaves our classroom and Shizune and Misha seat themselves without talking to me. I can feel Shizune's eyes burning into my back. She's probably angry at me, but I'm just as angry with her. I don't get why she had to drag me into this argument. Hanako doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. I have a bit of catching up to do despite trying to keep up with my studies at the hospital, but I'm not feeling the, the enthusiastic about it. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes, instead of opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The rhythmic clashing of talk on the, talk on the blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I start to copy down the equations just to pass the time, even though they are right there in the textbook. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do. I stay for a while, reviewing what we discovered in class today. I prefer to leave class anyway, so I don't have to deal with crowding in the hallways. I notice Shizune and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. Shizune is signing so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there is a pen of anger in there. Misha's trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can't barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down. Whenever they're discussing, it looks like serious business. She's in a size to the point where her wrists crackle, and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. So now she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters, and then on top of that, she has to sign back everything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, and she's like she's about to faint. Luckily for her, the business is soon finished, and the girls sit down in their seats again. I'm so tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. I'll use the opportunity to reconcile with Shizune a bit, without getting roped into the student council thing again, though I suspect that door is now closed for me. Festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in the school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who has doesn't have something to do. Zune scoffs at me at first as I'm trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me. Then in the end, she starts sagging with about it doing either. Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly confused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic tone strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like Shizune is actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly into Misha. She must have practiced it vigorously. Well, of course, we're in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. It's an important duty of ours, to ensure the success of the festival with all our strength. We should shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations of the festival were to fail. That's why there must be no flaws. Or, uh, I think it was encumbrances. No, nothing that may, might make the festival short of perfect. 
Sune's passionate speech and Misha's acting are t really oddly fitting for them. Oh, hello. I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again! Hanako blushes hard at Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Shizune stares at her probingly, causing Hanako to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be seen up nervously around the edge of the door. Maybe she is showing her dislike of Hanako by association of her dislike with Lily, and it appears so, and Hanako probably knows it as well. What is it, Hanako? <sighs> Has Lily been in here? Sir, we haven't seen Sato. She uh, came in by the morning, though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Shizune, who stares back at her with her usual studying gaze. What's she trying to do? Of course, Shizune isn't going to look away, and she is intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It is a little uncomfortable watching Hanako's reacting to Shizune's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people do of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do you know where do you know where she is? If she has any sense in her head, she's in a classroom working on her festival project, but who knows where that woman is loitering at? Leave her alone, let her drink her damn tea. Hanako nods quickly and retreats with haste. What were you talking about? Oh yeah, we were really working hard to make the festival happen. And doing other people insane along the way. Well, good luck with that. I stand to leave, making my exit before either of them manages to berate me any more for slacking off. The halls are somewhat quiet as expected. Everyone must be in club meetings or festival preparations, or both. Shizune's words about being a slacker echo in my head. I feel a bit guilty about not contributing, but it seems to like there's all to do something concrete about the matter. But the festival is too late already unless I count helping Shizune and Misha, which... I naturally don't. Clubs, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a club type of a person. Halfway through the door, I mean, halfway through the way from the school building into the dorms, I spot a figure in front of the dorms. It's Rin. It looks like she's working on her mural today, too. I'll call for tour, but she doesn't seem to notice me approaching. She's sitting on an upturned box, looking intently at the wall she is painting with a brush held between her toes. The mural has progressed considerably since yesterday, but it is still only half done, as far as I can tell. More colors have appeared, and the twisted human-like figures have spread and increased in number. I have to say, the style is quite eye-catching and very unique. Not that I would be knowledgeable about art or any measurable scale, but it's very nice-looking, nevertheless. I'll clear my throat to get her attention, but not startle her so that so her concentration won't break. Wait. She doesn't even turn to check who it is. I'll wait. Fifteen minutes later, I decide that her concentration is indeed unbroken, and also that I have waited long enough to warrant poking her gently on the shoulder to remind her of my presence. Rin turns her head mechanically into my direction, ending up staring at my kashala. Oh, it's a sow. She could tell I would feel a lot less uncomfortable if she would look at my face. An astute observation. Hard at work, I see. The conversation starts as if I hadn't been there for a quarter of an hour already, but it's not a concern. At least it starts. Looking good. It does. The layers of paint hiding other layers of paint. Mixing and shaping the human figures really create an impressive look, but Rin looks miffed. You should come and I waste some progress. Seven years of bad luck. Sounds terrible, I guess. Take it back then. Still looks good. Wonder if I get 14 years of bad luck for thinking that. Rin turns back to look at her painting and pokes it with the big toe. Could you make some of this color? I'm running out of it. She looks down at the half empty bowl with the remains of the steam pinkish paint in it. I didn't really intend to stay and help her with this project, though. I guess I didn't intend to do anything much. I look at her and she looks emptily back at me, just this once. She picks up another brush and drenches it in another tone of pale red. There are dozens of similar bowls all around her working area. From the books, looks of this scene, she could have been sitting there for hours. I wonder if she has. That would mean she'd been skipping around school, which, of course, one put behind something like Rin. I pour a little bit of white and red to the bolt, trying to match the color with the one already on the wall. I can't seem to get it right. It's really inconvenient for her not to mix enough in the first place. In the first place, getting it to be exactly the same tone would be impossible. But at least I can try to get it as close as I can. Speaking of hard work, isn't that huge workload for you two? It's such a big painting and all. Oh, I'm not only better enough yet to think like that. I guess you aren't. Guess right. Like hard though. I feel like slugs. 
Slugs made out of sea slugs because of the position? Yeah, like doing it in a horizontal position more if you know what I'm talking about. But it can't be helped. Can't ask the wall to lay down. Saying that she stretches herself a little, bending her legs back far more than a human should flex. Astonishing how effortlessly she manages her body around. There's a small flinch in her otherwise blank expression. A hint of pain, maybe, as she stretches out her calves. We must have stand among dexterity far more above a normal person to be able to live like she does, but she is wearing out working on this. I push yourself so much. Take a break uh, or something at least. Continue tomorrow if it's bad. This gives her a pause. Uh, long with two. Feeling like a mental yawn. I don't think so, Hisao. I'm not pushing myself. Sure looks like you are. No, it's not about pushing or pulling or anything related to that kind of thing. There's this boy. A boy? Yes. Where? At the art club. Uh, and? He is blind. Oh, who do you paint if you're blind? No idea. So why is he there? That's the point, he is there. She should really speak more than one word at a time to make this feel more like a discussion and less like an interrogation. You can't really do anything that you call art, right? But he comes in there anyway, he paints. Why? I don't know, why? I don't know, that's why I asked. So? He doesn't paint often, but I think that his paintings are really interesting. I'm sure they are. I once tried that painting with my eyes closed. It was too interesting and cleaning up the floor took ages. Didn't try again. But he's becoming better at sculpting. I see. Maybe she was trying to make a point with this. Maybe she forgot she had one. Sometimes the art club is full of interesting people. Not really. Pretty blunt statement and she totally missed the sarcasm. No? Just like I said, there are not many interesting- Oh shit. Whatever. Maybe you have. Maybe. That boy is interesting. Maybe I am like that boy, or maybe you are. Maybe everyone is. And things you can't do just because you can. It's pretty deep, I think. Tell that to her. We're deep one. Ugh. Nah, I'm really shallow and thought thought the thoughtless person. People say that to me all the time. Did you know I can only think of four things at the same time? No, but I now I do. Right now, I'm thinking of the second floor girl's toilet, ice cream flavored ice cream, the metal toe, and haircut. I'm going to need a haircut. Whoopsie. She her head around vigorously, letting her short and messy hair ruffle wildly around. I can see that doing is something she likes to do. We fall silent as Brynn treads around absentmindedly, poking some brushes around. I thought about the art clip sticks in my head for a while longer. I feel like I'm treading in very unknown territory with art. The way these meetings with Ringo is so I'm starting a smoking habit or something. I should probably stop talking with her. It's not like I dislike her, despite the confusion of her being herself causes. I don't dislike art either. I've even drawn for fun sometimes. I just don't have a real creative drive or any technical skill. So usually if I were to draw something, I get white paper syndrome and just freeze completely. If that or I manage to draw something disfigured and promptly get frustrated at my inability to put the picture in my head down on paper. And call it quits without even really trying to make an effort. Rin really doesn't have this problem, but she frustrates me in another way. Being with her is like looking into a mirror that doesn't reflect anything. It makes one person question the sanity of the act. Rinse and style with their backs, swing from side to side, apparently uncomfortable with the uncomfortable silence. She's staring at me again, or maybe over my shoulder. I can't quite figure out where, where her eyes are focused on. Thinking of blooming so she can carry on working undistracted so that I can do whatever I'm going to do alone. It's not like I have anything that I must be done today. Oh, shoot. <sighs> no, but I just heard to tell Hanako that Lily was looking for her. Do you know her from my class? Oh, her, the mysterious toilet girl. That person is funny. I saw her going to the toilet five times during one class three weeks ago. I'm sure it's a world record. It was very mysterious. That's why you call her mystery toilet girl? What other reason would there possibly be? I mean, th it, it's an internal mystery. I don't follow her in there. Maybe it was the week before that. Could have been. Looking at her makes me hungry. Don't say that. It's not around her. When it turns to me, look maybe blankly, as if she's not sure why I re reproved her. She doesn't not acknowledge understanding any more than any before. So I gave up at this point. So do you want to go to eat dinner then? No, not yet. When has turned her hungry gaze back to the wall. Looking slightly more energetic, or at least less lethargic than she did before. 
that the wall is an opponent. She has to vanquish some things she must overcome before she can indulge in dinner. This is the feeling I get. A weird sense of empathy becomes, I mean, overcomes me and makes me smile a little to myself. For all her oddity, Rin is pretty cool after all. I'll be going anyway. Have fun. Rin is already grasping brush and is dipping into the fresh paint. So of course she can't hear me anymore. Doesn't answer if she does.